Boy, just be yourself. If people don't like it, if you're being yourself, fuck them. It's Big Los, and uh, I can't really say welcome to an episode of The Noise. This is more so us, uh, well, me rather tapping in giving you guys some updates and um i guess answering some questions as well if you haven't noticed this is just me on the show and um we also missed an episode last week kev is uh kev is out of commission at the moment uh he's fine trust me um but of course your uh well wishes and prayers would definitely be appreciated uh for him so um that's part of the reason why we didn't have an episode last week and why this uh episode is actually kind of rushed in a sense uh something really quick <clears throat> again i can't really call this an episode really this is more so us uh tapping in and uh, letting you guys know what's going on and also as we promised we never really had a chance to do an official announcement on the show however we um did a lot through social media and we appreciate everyone that was able to participate uh definitely apologize for not being a lot more uh formal with this uh by introducing it on the show and then really giving all the ear hustlers an opportunity to do so. Um, but yeah, unfortunate situations, obviously, uh, you can't really stop life. You know, these podcasts are definitely something that we get out there and do to kind of, you know, give people a little insight on, on our lives and our opinions about certain things and, uh, have fun with it. So of course, when, you know, things start to change or consistency gets a little different, it instantly creates a concern or, uh, an uh, outrage at times. Uh, we've definitely heard from uh, the ear hustlers and we definitely appreciate you guys being so vocal about it. Uh, we will be back next week for our end of the year episode. Um, and of course that's going to feature the beat network family. Uh, hopefully we can get Kev back on for that time as well. But again, your, uh, your well wishes and your prayers are definitely, um, appreciated and warranted. Um, yeah. And Kev, man, if you're listening, my guy, I, I definitely hope that you get better, bro. Absolutely. But yeah, as I was saying, we, did our all I want for Christmas giveaway the second year of us doing it first year uh, was a little eh, kind of mixy because it really left everything open for anybody to win depending on how you decide to go about the tagging this time around we had people share a flyer tag us and of course use the hashtag all I want for Christmas and let us know what it is they want for Christmas and um again i'm happy for all the ear hustlers that participated uh we did get a few people in there and we're we're doing this raffle style we're gonna end up pulling uh from these random names uh i'm actually gonna get to that a little later just as uh some quick hot takes so you can at least get a little bit of the noise while you're listening to this random episode or uh this is like an ep of podcast episodes and it's gonna be just me so I doubt you really want a full length anything of like just low. So we need that. We need that counterbalance of, of cab, even though we agree on a lot of things. We need to have like that full show set up. So this is going to be something really quick, as you can see from the timestamp when you uh, when you plugged in. I, I want to address something that I said on the last episode that we had and that Kevin Hart uh, apologized for. The um, I don't want to call them homophobic because they they really weren't homophobic. Uh, but for the anti-gay slurs, there was no apology. There was him addressing it and him saying that you know he wants to make sure he's on the right side of history and make sure he moved forward. But he didn't you know verbally apologize for for so for people that enjoy being critical uh, and wording for people that they don't like because let's be honest, you're not going to give that same respect for artists that you like but do problematic shit. Uh, for those people, you know, you're absolutely right. The man didn't apologize. He addressed it and he stated why he wouldn't be moving forward with it, but he didn't apologize. So if we're going to be critical, I guess I kind of get the outrage. It, it does makes it does make some sense. I won't say it make all the sense, but it definitely makes some sense. But that's just me kind of correcting, you know, my stance when it came down to Kevin Hart. I still do feel that we should allow people to grow. There are a lot of artists, there are a lot of people in general who do less to uh to take back certain things that they said or certain things that they did they just kind of hope that their current change their that the, the current evolution that they're going through should be proof enough that they're a different person so again if we're going to be if we're going to have outrage over everything then the energy needs to be the same across the board keep the same energy for your favorites and for your not favorites uh that's my hot take with that cardi b and offset <laughs> i still hold the exact same mentality 
let people live because the second that your friends or your family, whoever gets involved in your relationship, you don't understand. You don't know him. You don't know her. All that other good stuff. Just let people be. Let them live their lives. And, you know, what I'm saying let them go about theirs. I'm only saying this because in, you know, in this business, in this podcasting business, especially when you speak uh, majority on pop culture and entertainment, you have to be plugged in with these things that's going on. So really following everything that's going on with Cardi B and Offset, I'm like, y'all just got to handle y'all business. Do y'all be, be in a relationship? Don't be in a relationship. Who the fuck cares? Just make sure culture grow up and it's good. But since we have to address it, I'm going to double down on what I initially said in the last episode. Nah, I think this shit's fake. Only reason I say that it's fake is because the most recent situation, which if it is real, was incredibly corny on Offset's part. Corny, uh, problematic may be a bit of a reach. And if it is problematic, it's not because of, you know, what he could have done. It's more so from the security team. But of course, Offset ran up on stage during... um, Cardi's performance I don't know if it was towards the end Beginning middle whatever the case is Either way let's just pretend this is real That's corny That's real corny um, For him to really take away that Time for her being you know a headliner I think it's her first time being a headliner Y'all go ahead and correct me if you're listening to this uh, this quick EP episode um, But yeah I think that was her first time headlining And then he came out to offer this huge apology You know I made a joke with somebody About this but it could be real It could have happened um, I said that, yeah, there's, you know, I, I get the anger towards offset, but there needs to be a lot more anger towards event security and management security, because it could have really been a situation that offset could have been disgruntled. Some could have triggered and he could have pulled some Terminator shit, dropped the cake and had a chopper. But obviously that wasn't the case. And it's like, obviously that wouldn't have been the case. But the main issue should be with the event security. How are you able to set up all this shit for this for this performance? plan everything out perfectly and still get out there and do something like that. Like there should have been a lot more tight knit, you know, watch like this is why security is being paid. This is why you have these kind of situations. You know, I'll look at the same thing with uh, Takashi allegedly sneaking his way on to um, to the powerhouse stage. Like there's no sneaking when you have event security. There's no sneaking. And I get, you know, Cardi and Offset with the Migos, they're they're all under QC or whatever, or at least by have the same management team. But there's really no explanation for disrupting a set that we're paying for and we're paying security for. Like that defeats the purpose of having security. If we're gonna do this out of love or whatever, then nah, <laughs> let it be paid for that. But of course, if it's fake, then the shit's gonna happen. But um, yeah, as has been reported. They were spotted in Puerto Rico on a jet ski. Uh, I think Cardi addressed the picture coming out, but her whole thing was that she was pissed at the dude that was leading the jet ski tour, took a picture and leaked it. But we're all so, oh, this is real. This is really happening. They on vacation in Puerto Rico. I really do think this is a, an attempt to recreate what happened with 444 and Lemonade. Y'all got to remember, we didn't know shit beforehand. We didn't know what was going on. We just saw Solange piece up Jigga in the elevator. And then like a year later, we got Lemonade. And then close to a year later, we got 444. I think this is a different situation. I think this is being forced. But whatever, you know, whatever you want to call it, my, my original stance, mind your business. Because if we, if we care that much about cheating, trust me, this would be something that's universal. We wouldn't hold celebrities to a higher standard. One thing that we need to be talking about when it comes to Cardi, though, is she's the first female artist to have all her records on her album at least go gold. That's 13 tracks. She got Bodak Yellow, which is seven times platinum. I Like It, which is five times platinum. Bartier Cardi, which is two times platinum. Be Careful, Ring, I Do, and Drip, all platinum. The rest of the records, gold. This is historic. We got to quit giving so much attention to the negative shit and and really start highlighting, you know, the things that are going on. I said it on the show before, people will scream your downfall but whisper your accomplishments. This is huge. This isn't just huge for, you know, the entertainment industry and music. This is huge for women in the entertainment industry. She's the, she's the first woman to do it. And think about all the classic albums that's came out. Granted, streaming has changed a lot of things. I get that. But... It's a time that we should really celebrate what she's doing. She's changing the game. 
And if we can't do that, if we only focus on the bullshit that's going on, then are you actually a fan? Or are you a spectator? That's that's the real question you need to ask yourself. So on behalf of the noise, Barty, yo, congratulations. Keep doing your thing. Keep killing it. Fuck what anybody got to say. And uh, that's that. So I got a few hot takes before we get to the actual drawing itself. So you may actually get a you know whole ass episode. You, you, you're not. You're going to get something short and sweet. While we're talking about platinum, guess who did it again? J. Cole. Cole World. Platinum with no features. At this point, we have to just accept that J. Cole is going to be one of those guys. He's going to be one of the goats moving forward. This music is effortless for him. Do I think uh, For Your Eyes Only was a good album? No. I like a few songs from that album. But um, at this point, man, like I said, you got to give J. Cole his respect. Whether you think he's boring, whether you think he's the most turnt rapper you ever heard, you got to give that man his respect. And people think, oh, you know, it's no huge accomplishment to go whatever with no features. But really think about when people release the track list. They don't release the track list. Oh, that song. I like that name. That shit sound good. You look at the track list and see who won't be on there. Who can we expect? We know not to expect anybody with a J. Cole album. J. Cole may low key be petty and give you like a mixtape of all features, but like all fire features. You know what I mean? But um, again, it's a big deal. Going platinum with no features. It's hard work because that's all you. That's all your bar game. And if, if you're going to come in and you deliver and then every time the man delivers, give that man his respect. Recognize what he's doing and applaud that man. This is big for the culture. This is showing you that you can actually go in there Still spit, spit some real shit at that, and there's still an ear for it. So salute to J. Cole for going platinum with no features again. Uh, <laughs> now, th- this part is this part is funny. This part is funny because I should have seen it coming with all the reunions and shit that's going on right now. But uh, the Millennium Tour, the Millennium Tour is happening, being headlined by B2K. All four members of B2K are going to be on this tour. That's so Marion, J. Bug, Fizz, a uh, little Fizz, and Rasby. Uh, of course, they got Mario performing, Pretty Ricky, Lloyd, Bobby V, uh, Yin Yang Twins, and Chingy. So, if you haven't recognized that, they are trying to capture that pocket, that 2000 and 2007 pocket, where those seven years was somebody's years. Like somebody really had their time in that almost decade. If you're one of the older millennials. That actually was our time. <laughs> we was we was the niggas out there cranking and snapping with the oversized uh, shirts and everything like that. So this is this is the concert for you. But let me tell you right now, I have a theory. I think that J Bug, I'm sorry, not J Bug. I, I feel like he uh, was able to get the PTO from Target to come do this job. But I feel like uh, Raz B. There you go. He was the one who set this all up. He funded the whole thing. As soon as it's time to do uh huh, all the lights gonna drop and he's gonna be like, now tell everybody how we were sucking each other's dicks. Like it's just have a whole setup for the show and that's what it's all gonna come out to. Uh, but in all seriousness, man, I'm, it's, I love seeing people get excited for this because this is taking them back to, like I mentioned before, that pocket. It's taking them back to that time to where it was really carefree. Only thing you wanted to do was have fun. Like this was really the, the change in, in, in the lit culture that we have today. This was like the beginning stages of it. And um, it's interesting that, you know, you didn't see cats like uh, Bow Wow on it. Now, I know that Bow Wow spoke about it, but I, it's Bow Wow. Y'all know I didn't look into it. But I did have an interesting thought. Like, it's crazy that they didn't at least grab Nick Cannon for this. I don't think there's going to be an arena tour. You know, if this is coming to Vegas, if you're familiar with Vegas venues. The best I think this is going to do is the Pearl at the Palms. But I think if had they grabbed Nick Cannon based off the strength of the singles that he did have and his popularity today, they could have, you know, slipped a little bit into the smaller arenas. You know what I mean? But um, I think this is huge. I think it's going to be very interesting. If y'all go, y'all need forces. I'm talking about Air Force Ones. Ladies, if you bring it back to jersey dresses, make sure it's updated teams. I need to see that LeBron 23 Laker jersey dress. You got to make sure your crank and snap game is on point. You got to make sure you walk it out like a motherfucker. And when the Yin Yang Twins get on, don't mosh pit. Just be drunk. Just make sure you're drunk by the time Yin Yang Twins come around. Because if you're not familiar with that era, I wish I was of age to at least legally drink. (laughs) Because um, it had to be a completely different turn up when you actually had to drink in your system. Uh, Last hot take, and then we'll get to the poll. Because this is actually going to count longer than I expected. Jay-Z reached out to Travis Scott who uh, secured his bag by working 
with uh, Maroon 5 during the Super Bowl halftime show. I'm all about the bag. I am all about the bag. However, in this situation, the bag is kind of secondary. I look at this situation. And I think this is a prime opportunity to be like, nah, I'm good. Travis Scott is the biggest artist in the world right now, at least one of them. What better way to really stick it to the Super Bowl that you already asked all these huge artists to the point where you had to go get Maroon 5, who I think don't turn anything down. You had to go get Maroon 5 and Maroon 5 reached out to Travis Scott to have him come. Imagine if Travis Scott said no. That's a hell of a message for uh, for the NFL and uh, for the Super Bowl, because, again, that's a crazy bag. That is an insane bag. However, I do think Travis Scott is going to do it. Um, no fault to him. Again, he's just making sure his money's good, making sure his daughter's good. You know, he's had a pretty interesting year, to say the least, uh, with a lot of ups and a lot of downs. So I get it. However, I think it would be an amazing message uh, for him to turn it down. So that's uh, that's all my hot takes that you get in like 15 minutes about me, which ain't bad. I feel like you sit around, you talk to yourself for 15 minutes. You know, it, it could warrant some counseling. But in this situation, it's a little different because I'm talking to the mic and you all are uh, you all are listening. So I appreciate your ear hustlers for sticking in with my on and off voice. And I'm, like I said, I'm kind of doing this in a rush. Uh, but let's get to the drawing. So now if Kev was here, we would have done this on video. So you can see that there was no bullshit tied behind it. But unfortunately, it was left up to me to just do on my lonesome. So the winner of All I Want for Christmas 2018 is Deidre Williams. Yes, that's right. Uh, D.1920 on Instagram said, my ideal Christmas gift is to be debt free. Actually, that's my ideal Christmas gift, birthday gift, Sunday through Monday gift, LOL, hashtag Christmas. But really, hashtag All I Want for Christmas is a new turntable, an Orbit Plus turntable with a built-in preamp. Well, Deidre, I hope someone heard that and it's like, you know what? Boom, I got you. Uh, but then you don't get that from us. What you're going to get from us is our uh, brand new noise T-shirt, which we're going to make available to sell at the top of the year. Our uh, Ear Hustlers United shirt. And you're also going to get a $50 Visa gift card. So if we can put that towards the turntable, then God damn it, we helped out. But shout out to Deidre Williams. Uh, She's been a loyal Ear Hustler since day one. Uh, all around great human being. Um, Very interactive, man. So we definitely love having her. Uh, being so tight with us and uh, very deserving as well. So congratulations to Deidre for that one. Uh, We're going to get that sent off to you as soon as possible. Uh, And with that being said, I think I have talked enough. So um, Big Los IG on IG. I guess that y'all can follow me on Snapchat again. I think it's just Big Los 89. Uh, Of course, you can follow everything The Noise at The Noise Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And of course, BeatNetworkOnline.com for all things Beat Network. Again, uh, Kev, if you're listening, man, feel better, brother. Uh, if you want to send your well wishes and prayers to him, of course, you can do it through the noise and I can forward it to him. Or you can send it to me and I'll get it forwarded to him. Uh, but other than that, again, we apologize for uh, the missing episode and this lack of episode today. Um, but, you know, with you guys being our little ear hustlers, we, you know, we pray that you guys do understand. Uh, yeah, as always, we appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, we appreciate the support. And as always, it's Big Los. It's the noise.